This is Twit. So what they did release uh, just yesterday is their first open weight models in a long time. Uh, ChatGPT OSS 120B and 20B. Did they ever release open weights before? It says in this Wired article, ChatGPT 2, but nobody wanted oh, ChatGPT 2. Yeah, nobody, nobody wanted that. <laughs> uh, now, the, able, the ability to run these models on your local system. Now, the 120 gigabyte model, you probably can't run on a system unless you've got a lot of, uh, of VRAM, a lot of GPU. How does that compare to the uh, the small llamas? I think llamas 70. So it's it's big. It's 50% bigger, uh, more than 50% bigger. Um, 20B, you could pro run on almost any machine. Um, Sam said, we're excited to make this model the result of billions of dollars of research. They have billions. In fact... They are now uh, letting their employees uh, sell their stock at a valuation of half a trillion dollars, <laughs> which is pretty good for a company that I don't think has ever made any money, but I might be wrong. Um, You're you not. can download them both for free <laughs> no, on Hugging so Face as usual. Okay. Uh, yeah, the last open weight model released by OpenAI was ChatGPT2 back in 2019. Here, anybody could drive our Edsel. <laughs> but these are these are their state of the art models. Well, they will be, or they were, or they will be until five comes out, right? And for clarification, open weight license. models are just basically models that you're able to download locally and tweak and run and locally play around without with. sending any yeah. information back to the home office. Um, and I think they're being pushed into this by the ch active Chinese community, the Q1 from Alibaba well, but, and DeepSeek and yes, the French Mistral that, also. Huh? It's interesting that, that um, uh, Zuckerberg has been backing off open. Yeah. But at the same time, Jan LeCun is staying, is waving the flag out loud of open. So I think there must be something going on in Meta to decide what's going to be open and what's not. Yeah, I mean, they never officially said we're not, we're going to stop, pull back on our open no, source. No, no, but it's LLMs. been uh, obviously some discussion. Yeah. It was reported by uh, the New York Times that they were considering it. Yeah, internally, but that was... It was, a, it was an interpretation of what he was saying about the, yeah. about the difficulties of this. But yeah, I think the pressure to be open is, uh, remains huge. There's also, uh, I think, uh, it's fair to say, a benefit to being open. Then you get a lot more people working with your tools, and, and yep. there's some value to that. Hi, this is Benito. Like, I, I also think like people who are really, really serious about this AI stuff, they, they use it local. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm very uh, interested in running uh, my AI, uh, AI locally. Um, or, you know, it's interesting to do it through, for instance, Kagi in a more privacy-forward way would be very interesting one of the things kagi does with its assistant is you can say preserve all my chats which is the default in most ai's ai chatbots or delete it every day start fresh don't i don't want you to remember anything i say to you and now so that we know that which sam altman has been quick to say everything you say to chat gpt could be subpoenaed <laughs> at some point by the new york the, times yeah the court is forcing them to preserve it in this new york times lawsuit uh, so he wants to make sure you understand that you have no privacy when you're chatting on the server. That doesn't mean if you download the models and chat locally. It's just that it takes a lot of hardware to run. So I spoke locally. to the AI librarian at uh, Stony Brook yesterday. Uh, who's, is who's this a there. human librarian yes, that it is knows human librarian. AI? Yes, or yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> it is the librarian for AI, not the AI librarian. I misspoke. And, and, and he's running a local model. And they've got a few GPUs, and he's using Llama. And it allows the university to take the collections that they don't necessarily want to make public or can't and uh, make them open to the, to the students. The openness enables so much university uh, innovation. So is this, you, I mean, you'd previously described him as the AI librarian. Is this this guy's full-time job? Focusing yeah. on... He was just hired. Uh, wow. From That's USAID, really by the way. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. You might want to have him on the show at some point. I think that would be really interesting. I mean, I, I'm like very interested in the uh, niche applications of these tools and modeling, you know, that that you can get. Uh, I, I'd be curious, I guess, also to hear how students are using it or faculty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's just the beginning of this wild... <laughs> It's a sandstorm coming. It, it is a sandstorm. I'm telling you, we're getting close. <laughs> hey, I hope you enjoyed this highlight from 
intelligent machines. You know, we do the show every Wednesday. You can watch us do it live. Or, as they say, like and subscribe. There's a link down below. Thanks. <laughs>